In this video, we will discuss the priority scheduling algorithm. In this algorithm, a priority number is associated with each process. And whichever process has the highest priority, the CPU will be allocated to that particular process. If there are two processes with equal priority, then they will be scheduled in first come first serve order. So if there are two processes having the same priority, so whichever process has arrived earlier, it will be scheduled first. If you think of the shortest job first algorithm, then you can think that its priority is inverse of the predicted next CPU burst time. So this is also kind of implementing a priority scheduling because here the priority is based on what is the duration of the next CPU burst time. If the next CPU burst is larger, then the priority of the process is lower and vice versa. Now priorities can be defined internally or externally. So if they are being defined internally, they, the system is going to use some measurable quantity to compute the priority of the process. And these quantities or these uh, parameters could be the time limits of the process, how much time it requires, what is the memory requirement of the process, how many files are opened by the process, what is the ratio of the average IO burst to the average CPU burst time of the process. So based on these certain quantities, the, pro the system might define the priority of the process. Then there could be an external way of also setting the priority of the process and this is set by criteria which is outside the purview of the operating system. It could be set by the administrator. It depends upon the importance of the process. It depends upon the amount of funds being paid by a user for using the system or the department which is sponsoring the work. So based on these then also the administrator can decide the priority of the uh, process. Now this priority scheduling algorithm it can be implemented as a preemptive or as a non-preemptive algorithm. Preemptive means that once a process has got the CPU then it the CPU can be taken away from the process. Non-preemptive means that once a process gets the CPU then the operating system cannot take the CPU away from the process till the time the process itself releases the CPU. You can check my earlier videos on preemptive and non-preemptive scheduling. So when a process arrives in the system and comes in the ready queue, then its priority will be compared with the priority of the process which is currently running on the CPU. Now, if the priority of the new process is higher than the priority of the currently running process and if the scheduling is preemptive, then the higher priority process will get the CPU. So the system will preempt the CPU of the currently running process and give the CPU to the new process which has come of higher priority. But if the scheduling has been implemented in a non-preemptive manner, then if the new process is having a higher priority, it will be placed at the head of the ready queue. The currently running process will continue running and when the current process releases the CPU, then the new process will be given the CPU. Now, one of the major problem of priority scheduling is indefinite blocking or starvation. What does this mean? Suppose there is a ready queue and we have processes lined up over here P1, P2, P3 and P1 is running currently. P2 is having slightly lower priority and P3 is still having slightly lower priority. So the processes are ready to run. 
and they are waiting for the CPU. Now suppose when P1 was running, some few more processes came up in the ready queue which were having higher priority. So after P1 finishes, then P4 and P5 will start running. Now suppose while P4 and P5 consecutively they ran on this uh, system, then suppose some new higher priority process comes. So if there is a steady stream of higher priority processes coming in the ready queue, some low priority process like P3, it will keep on waiting indefinitely for the CPU and it will not be able to run. So this is this scenario is referred to as starvation. One of the solutions for this is aging. What is done in aging is that the priority of processes are gradually increased. So those processes which are waiting in the system for a long time like for P3 which has been waiting in the system for some time then suppose initially its priority was very low and it was 127. Now it will be increased after one second to 126 which is slightly higher. Then after one second again it will be increased to 125 and so on. So gradually its priority will become from low and by the time it reaches zero it will become a high priority process. So it will not be left waiting indefinitely in the ready queue. Let's take an example of a non preemptive priority scheduling. So we have these five processes, these are the burst time, these are the uh, arrival time and we are assuming that a higher priority is indicated by a lower number. That means the highest priority process over here is P2 because it is having a priority 1. Now let us see how to work out this example. At time 0, we just have one process which has arrived in the system which is P4. So P4 is there in the ready queue and now P4 will be given the CPU. At time 1, now over here process P3 has arrived, so P3 is placed in the ready queue. Now the priority of P3 is 4, priority of P4 is 5. So actually this is having, P3 is having higher priority. But since we have implemented a non preemptive algorithm, we cannot take away the CPU from the running process which is P4. So P4 will continue running. Again at time unit 2, another process P1 arrives in the system. So this will also be placed in the ready queue but P4 will keep running. At time interval 3, P4 has completed its CPU burst. Its CPU burst time was 3. So P4 has completed its CPU burst and now P4 is out of the system. So P4 has gone from the ready queue. Now once this P4 has released the CPU, the scheduler will check out of these two processes in the ready queue, P1 and P3 which is having the highest priority. So we see that the priority of P1 is 3, the priority of P3 is 4. So obviously we know that uh, P1 is having a higher priority. So now P1 will start running. At time interval 4, another process P5 has come. So P5 has, is also in the ready queue. P1 has also already gone from the ready queue because it has been given the uh, CPU so it is in the running state and at 5 another process has arrived which is P2 so P2 is also placed in the ready queue now. Since this is non preemptive 
P1 will keep running, no process will be able to preempt the CPU from it. So the burst time of P1 is 6, so from 3 to 9, P1 will keep running. Once P1 has released the CPU, then again the priorities of P3, P5 and P2 will be compared. So if we see, we see that the priority of process P2 is the highest. Now P2 will start running. So it has gone from the ready to the running state. P2 will run for a burst time of 2. So from 9 to 11, P2 will run. Once P2 has finished, again priorities of P3 and P5 will be compared. So we see that the priority of P5 is higher than that of P3. So now P5 will be given the CPU and P5 will run for 4 time units from 11 to 15 and then finally P3 will get to run for 8 time units from 15 to 23. So this is the Gantt chart that has been prepared for our non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. Let us check the wait time for each process. Process P1 got the CPU at time 3 but its arrival time was 2. So 3 minus 2, 1. That means for one time unit, it had to wait in the ready queue. Process P2 arrived at time 5, but it got the CPU at time 9. So from nine, 5 to 9, it was in the ready queue for four time units. P3 got the CPU at 15, but it had come at 1. So its wait time is 14 and similarly for P4 and P5. To compute the average waiting time, we add the waiting time of all the processes, divide by the number of processes and we get 5.2. So this is how we compute the uh, waiting time for a non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. For the preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. We will check that in the next video.